It's another edition of the UTRGV Baseball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this is the head coach of UTRGV Baseball, the one and only Manny Mentrana. Hello, Jonah. So if you defrosted from the weekend. Still working on it, Jonah. <laughs> Still uh, almost there, but uh, it was cold. 30 some odd degrees in Chicago, three games in a span of two days. But, you know, I was talking to Jim Lancaster, your head trainer, and he was telling me that uh, the guys were actually cool with it. Well, a, a big part of it is uh, attitude. Um, so we tried to, uh, you know, have some fun with it. Um, obviously, during games, we usually don't, uh, don't uh, look upon kindly with the guys uh, dancing and jumping up and down in there. But, um, you know, we, uh, it was cold. Uh, I mean, in the, not only in the 30s, but wind and rain and snow. I mean, actually, when we got to the game on Saturday, uh, they had a big plow there uh, clearing um, all the snow from their, uh, from their turf field. That was the only way we would have played. If they wouldn't have turf, there was no way we would have played. Uh, so they were having fun with it. Uh, and again, it's a matter of attitude. Uh, you know, when you're five and six years old and you're playing baseball and it's snowing, it's, it's a great thing. Um, and we wanted them to have that kind of attitude. So uh, we made the best of it. And, uh, you know, it was a good weekend. We went two out of three. Um, weather like that is very, uh, very uh, easy not to, uh, not to win games because you can't move. You know what I mean? It was really, really, really cold. So I'm um, glad to get out of there with two out of three wins. Well, and then in, the, in your first win, Andrew Garcia became your third pitcher in a span of, what, two weeks to flirt with a no-hitter? He, uh, he was pretty, pretty dominant. Uh, I want to say he allowed three hits all throughout the game, um, complete game for him. Um, he did a good job of, uh, you know, not caring about the elements, um, really, really kept us in the game, dominated, uh, and we needed that um, after the loss on Friday. And then Justin Quinones in the second game, eight great innings of work. And what makes it even more impressive to me is that he had to sit there in game one. At least everybody else was moving around. They're probably nice and warm by the time game two comes around. But he's just sitting in the dugout waiting. Well, we kind of, um, and again, we had to play two games on Saturday because the weather Sunday um, was going to be rain um, all day, which it was. So we played one on Friday, doubleheader on Saturday. What we did with Justin was during the first game, um, we gave him a couple options um, the night before. Uh, either you can stay at the hotel and we will send the bus back for you, or you can come with us and just hang out on the bus. Usually our bus driver, um, you know, when a doubleheader like that, or even a single game, they'll, they'll just sit in the bus and watch a movie. So we gave those two options to uh, Justin and he chose the, uh, the latter. He wanted to come over. Um, he stayed in the, uh, on the bus for a few innings. Then he came over to the dugout for an inning or two and back on the bus. So uh, we did all we could to make sure that, that, that he was warm because mm -hmm. you were right. I mean, sitting um, in that dugout doing nothing for three hours and having to pitch, that's, that's a lot to ask. Um, so it worked out for us. Well, you got great pitching all weekend. You only, uh, or most of the weekend, I mean, when you think about it, you only needed to go to your bullpen twice. Yeah. Um, you know, Johnny on Friday night, he just couldn't get loose. Um, we tried everything with him in the bullpen. Um, no soreness or you know, no pain. He just couldn't get loose. Um, we got him in the, in the dugout. We tried to, to rub some, um, some uh, balm on it that the, uh, to heat it up. Uh, our trainers worked on it. But uh, he's usually you know, anywhere from 88 to 92. Um, he wasn't near that. He just could not get loose. Um, so we had to go to the bullpen early in that game. Um, one rough inning for the bullpen, but then uh, Zach Martinez settled in um, and, and pitched well after that. So... Um, again, it wasn't a Johnny Gonzalez type day, but again, when, you, when you're a pitcher and you can't get loose because of the weather, and it was bad Friday. Friday was raining, um, snowing. It would rain, it would snow, the wind was going, it was just, it was, it was miserable. Um, so, again, fortunate. Um, I was very proud of our guys that in that kind of uh, weather, which we're not used to, obviously, down in the Valley, uh, we were able to go there and win two out of three. Hitters didn't seem to mind. Seven runs, seven runs, nine runs. The key was getting out early, Jonah. Um, we found that out Friday. As the game progressed on Friday, it got so cold that it, it, it became hard, really difficult to swing the bat. Um, so uh, before the meetings, both games on, on Saturday, we asked the guys to, to jump out early because as the day progressed, it was going to get colder and it was going to be a, a lot more uh, difficult to create an offense. Um, and we did that the first game. We scored two or three in the first inning of, on Saturday's doubleheader. And more importantly, we did that the second game, which by that time it was around 4.30 in the afternoon and, and it was getting cold. Um, so they did, the offense did a nice job of responding and getting us enough runs, like as you mentioned. Um, you know, one game with nine runs, the other two games with seven. Um, that should be enough to win. Uh, and 
three runs in the first in each game. Then you had a four-run fifth in game one, a three-run fourth in game two. So you just bunched together those hits, and then the, the pitchers helped. Yeah, after those big innings, the second big innings we've had, um, that's you know pretty much uh, you know seal the fate because it it was just so difficult. I mean, even for us coaches that uh, we don't we are, we can wear more layers obviously in the players because we don't have to play. Um, but even we were, I mean, extremely, extremely cold. So um, they did a great job at offense did of putting a couple big innings together. Um, and, you know, the pitchers did a nice job of uh, holding them to one run and two runs. Had some guys in some different positions. Uh, you know, we saw Jose Garcia in left field before you guys left on the trip. But then in the doubleheader, you had him in center field both games. What did you think? He did a good job. I mean, he's a good athlete. He runs well. Um, I think uh, uh, his future, um, if he gets the opportunity to play at the next level of professional baseball, it is, is going to be in the outfield. I mean, he, he can catch for us. Um, but with Cole Oncar still out with the concussion last weekend, um, he was our starting center fielder. And also Caden Rosholt out with a concussion. They didn't even make the trip. Um, we had to make some moves. And we um, we talked about it and decided that uh, uh, Maido um, would be uh, probably our best bet in center. And he didn't disappoint. He made all the plays that we needed to make. Um, I mean, he, he looked good out there. So you've got two catchers in the outfield now. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we have uh, my Garcia, Maido, and we have and we we have Huck. But uh, uh, pleasantly surprised the way that uh, I mean Huck from day one made it look easy. Um, and Maido last year at his junior college did play a lot of games. Uh, he platooned between the outfield um, and and caught and played some games at first base. But uh, you know both of those guys have been doing a good job in the outfield. Uh, prior to the season, we would have never thought the lineup would have looked this way. But that's what happens, you know, um, as the season goes on with injuries and you have to make adjustments. Um, and we've been, um, we've, we've done that. Austin Oaks has now started four straight games behind the plate. What have you thought of what he's done back there? Austin does a nice job back there. Um, again, there was another one that we started the year as an outfielder. Uh, caught in junior college. They converted him to an outfielder. We recruited him as an outfielder. Um, but um, to make the team better, we had to make some adjustments. Um, we brought him in. To catch, we moved uh, Austin Douglas. Now he's a pitcher for us, so we made some some adjustments uh, that are be that's you know they're beginning to pay off uh, dividends right now, and hopefully they will pay big dividends as the year goes along. And certainly Oaks has been hitting in the lineup too, which uh, certainly helps get an extra bat in there. You know what? He's he's he has gap power, Jonah. Um, I think he's leading the team in doubles, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. um, and a lot fewer at bats because he you know he wasn't a starter for um, quite a few of the games. So he, he gives us a bat in the middle of the lineup that's got a little gap power, um, which is a threat because you want those guys in the middle that uh, with a runner at first base are able to drive him in from first. Um, and Austin Oaks has, has, has done that. And then once Cole Oncar does come back, it gives you some uh, good lineup problems to have when you're facing a right-handed pitcher. You know, Cole, um, again, I think uh, he has the ability to play at the next level. Um, but at the next level, he, he, he's not going to be a center fielder. He's, he's going to be a corner outfielder, either left fielder or right fielder, probably left. Because um, he hits enough, he has a very good arm. Um, it's just, you know, in, in center field, you want a guy that can really, really run, um, you know, s sub 7-0. Um, and Cole's not that guy. But um, I think he has a future. Cole's back, which you're right, does give us some options. Um, and right now, we're probably going to play Cole on the left, leave uh, Garcia in center, because um, I think um, that combination um, will work out uh, pretty good for us. Well, you're going to get to see that combination for the first time this weekend against North Dakota. I think they have a lefty day one, but a righty day two. And uh, we know Zach Muckinern starts Friday. And here's a guy, we, you know, you've seen him the last couple of years. He beat USC earlier this year. So uh, that should be an interesting matchup. Every game that he's pitched, uh, um, he's kept uh, North Dakota in a game. He's, he's, he's a professional prospect. He's a left-hander, um, 88 to 93. Um, you know, three pitches he commands for, for, for strikes. So we have our, our work cut out for him. And, and, you know, Johnny Gonzalez has to answer the bell. He has to uh, match him inning for inning. And our offense needs to, uh, you know, do whatever we need to do to scrape out some runs. Um, and hopefully at the end of the night, get the win. Nice to get your next two WAC series at home. Absolutely. Um, obviously, uh, travel this year has not been our friend. Uh, being snowed out uh, in northern Colorado, um, you know, and basically living in the airport for two days. And then we get we get to Chicago, but the, the weather was just, I mean, miserable. Um, so nice to have uh, valley weather for the next two weekends and uh, have conference weekends here um, in the valley.
You mentioned the snow out against Northern Colorado. Is that why you just added those two games against Texas A&M Corpus Christi to the schedule? Yeah, they were short some games, and so were we. Um, so we, um, we we try to work out some dates that, you know, one the dates would work out for them because they're also in conference play, and so are we. So we were able to add two more games, uh, one uh, on May the 4th um, over at Corpus and on uh, May the 17th. I want to say 17th, maybe the 16th. 17th, here, yeah. Here at our place. And what does that do, like the one on the 17th? That's, you know, right before your last conference weekend leading into the conference tournament. Does that help you to get ready for that conference tournament? You want, you want to be able to play at least, um, you know, when, when you can, at least one midweek game. Um, gives the other arms a chance to pitch. Plus, you don't have to go, you know, weekend through the entire week without seeing um, some live pitching from the opponents. Because obviously, um, when we don't have those midweek games, we'll enter squad like we did yesterday. Uh, but it's not the same. The intensity, um, you know, the um, the atmosphere of the game is not the same when you're inter squad, no matter how, how hard you try. So it's always good. And then we, ne we usually do not play midweek games that late. Um, but this was an opportunity to have a game uh, for both uh, us and Corpus Christi, and we did that. Well, UTRGV is back in action. They play host to North Dakota this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 7, 6, and 12. If you're in the Valley, we'll see you here. If not, watch all the games on TV, Time Warner Cable Sports Channel, or online at goutrgv.com. He's Manny Manchana. He's the head coach of the UTRGV baseball team. <laughs> My name's Jonah Goldberg. We'll see you next week. But until then, get your visa.